Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us here today at Dow U. Um, we're here today for a press conference with uh, the British and Commonwealth champions, uh, James DeGaulle and George Groves. And uh, just to think, 10, 12 years ago, it started out here in this very small amateur club that's gone on to produce two really good quality champions. And we're sitting here in the ring, amateur ring, where they all sparred and their careers began. And they're in a professional ring at the O2 on the 21st of May when I believe we're going to see some fireworks and we're going to see some really serious serious uh, issues settled, outstanding issues. It, this is no secret, this is a grudge fight. It doesn't need building up in any other way. There's certainly uh, no love lost between these two guys. And on the 21st, we're going to see some fireworks and I believe an explosive fight. And we'll see who's the best out of these two guys. I've got my theory who it is and I'm sure other people have got theirs, but on the night we're going to see who it is. Um, you know, this, this, this really is testament to British boxing when you think about it. Uh, places like this, small gyms like this with devo devoted coaches and p officials who run clubs, that takes us to the next stage in these guys' careers. They developed here, turned professional, and as I say, it's testimony that people put their time and effort into working in, in, in gyms like this around the country, the amateurs, to get these kids when you look from the area, get them off the streets and find them some direction in their life. Anyway, we've got some direction, we've got some a really good fight, and uh, everybody's here, so if you've got any questions to ask, please feel free to do so. What's with the black guy, Bill? Huh? Been sparring, and uh, got called working on my defence. Um, Who was that, Maven? What's that? Who was that? Who was it? That's a top secret. It's top oh. secret at the moment, I'm afraid. Oh. Sorry, guys. You bank. Wow. What do you make of the Black Eye James? Obviously, he's been having hard competitive sparring, but uh, I'd say, man, his defence is leaky. Uh, so he's going to get hit, he's going to get bruised up in sparring. Uh, but yeah, just obviously hard sparring, but. What's it going to be like on the night? There you go. What is it going to be like on the night? When we've got 10 ounce gloves and no head guard. How would you say you're sparring out in America, though, with the likes of Darrell, George? Has it made a difference to your sparring back here? Yeah, it's been good. I sparred with uh, Darrell, he was world class. Um, matched him since i come back here. Obviously, I haven't been sparring with world class operators, but I've kept the same level of intensity and uh, the same, the same, you know, same what you need to, to, to put him in sparring. Uh, I'm happy with it. Being back here in the same room as George, James, what sort of memories does it bring back and does it reinforce the personal nature of this? Uh, yeah, this is where it started. Uh, brings back memories, brings back good memories. This is where I used to school him day in, day out in the ring. Uh, so it brings back great memories and it feels nice being back. Was that how it was? No, I, I, I was actually a bit miffed when they said they wanted to have a press conference here because I thought, it's not really the sort of place James wants to be, is it? It's, it's just going to remind him that I'm better than him. And that you know, I have to pay, pay um, tribute to my trainers, Mickey Delaney and Peter Carson, who, who are still here now. I just want to give them a sort of shout out. They're still working hard, putting fighters you know, through their paces here. Did the same for me, did the same for James. And then obviously after I beat him, you, everyone here can see how small this gym is and realise that you know, we forgive him for not being able to face coming back to the gym and, and, and sparring and training alongside me in this small cause. What are you on about, George? What are you on about? I'm on about after I beat you, you quit the gym. I quit the gym. I was training with Steve Newland, the junior coach that I've known since the age of 10. What are you on about? And then went and won a gold medal. What are you on about? What are you on about? I didn't want to be around you. I couldn't, it just didn't make sense. Exactly. Right, it just it didn't make sense. He did, didn't want to it be just didn't around make sense. me. It didn't make sense, George. Come on, be serious. Be serious, mate. Have you ever encountered, Frank, anything like this? Two stablemates with quite such a bitter rivalry. I and mean, then it brings it home to you when you see the size of this place. It? Well, it does, and you can imagine the intensity of what it must have been back then. But uh, yeah, I think over the years, we've been, I've been involved in quite a, big, quite a few fights that have had a lot of uh, intensity. I mean, the obvious ones are. Um, ben and uh, Eubank, I mean, they, they are the obvious ones, but I think, I think this is even more so because these guys, as you say, come from the same area, the same manor, the same gym, 
you know, who's going to be, as I said, the start of this, who's going to be the guy who's going to be walking down the street that's wearing the crown? Who's it going to be? Who's going to be the governor of this area? And this is where we're going to find out. There's a lot, of, I honestly believe there's a lot at, at stake here for both of them. And it's a, it is a crucial fight in their careers. It's a, a fight that's happened early in their careers, but it's a fight that had to happen. The boxing board control all of it. And uh, James had a choice. He either vacate the title or defended his title. And he was adamant that he wanted to fight George. And that's what we're doing on the 21st of May. Does the amateur boat mean much now than in all reality, George, the victory of all the way out? Um, apart from, technically it means nothing. Apart from the fact it means that James Gal can't beat me, that's all, that's all I take from it. How do you register with you now, James? What, with the, 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 the fight? Right, yeah. Do you know what? Looking back, I'm glad that he did beat me now because we wouldn't be in this situation. So, uh, I'm glad. Why, but, uh, why do you mean? What do you mean by that? Because I'm just glad because we wouldn't be in this situation. A big fight, uh, all the hype. Uh, but, listen, everyone knows I won that fight. Uh, you think and it don't matter. It don't matter. If he went and beat me, I went on. Maybe I wouldn't have went on to win Olympic gold medal, uh, come off bronze. So, so you owe it to me. What, what, what he what he asked was, <laughs> does, you know, does it be? Start that question. Go on. Yeah. I mean, you think you only got this fight on the back of that victory? Is that what you're kind of? Pardon? You think you only got this fight now on the back of that amateur victory? Of course it did. Of course it's fact. He's lived off my name for half his life. For half his life. Of course, yeah. James, when was the last time you were actually in, in this studio? Who, with him? Yeah. Oh, years ago now. Years ago. I obviously come in here uh, and see the the young boys and come and show them my British spell and, and my, and my uh, sponsor, Lonsdale, uh, give them kids and stuff like that. So I'm always in the gym, but I ain't been in the gym with him for a long time. When, when you were splitting your sessions, was there, was there a day you actually ever bumped into each other here, sort of, no. the way in, on the way out? No. No. Mm -mm. As I say, I used to train with the seniors, with the, with my coach who trained me sort of all, all my life, and James left and trained with the 12-year-olds. So I never really felt the need to train with 12-year-olds. So. And, and, won, a gold, on and won a gold medal, change you your training with 12-year-olds. Is it going to be like that? Fantastic. Training with men, guys. I mean, Tornado in that ring. Adam, how hard have you pushed, George? I mean, we do see him marked up, the sparring has been hard. Any concern that you've, you've pushed him a little bit too hard? No. Why not? Why does it need to be this hard? Why haven't you pushed him harder? Why haven't I? Why aren't I concerned? Well, you said if I got concerns, I've got no concerns. Why did it need to be that hard then, the preparation for this? You're going to Have you been trying to put him really out of his comfort zone, though? You know, push him harder than you have before. So he's in a fight. Would each of you like to express your feelings about each other? That's not you and Adam, Frank. We're going on a date later. <laughs> Would you like to get go first? Then? What do you think about George? Well, I think about George. Yeah. I just think he's a moron. I just think he's just, just, just think he's just a joker. I can't. I ain't got much to say about him. I just think he's a silly guy, really. And that's why I ain't got much to say about him, to be honest. Apart from when I get in the ring, he's getting it, and that's it. Honestly, everyone knows. Everyone knows how I feel about him. Uh, so I'm not on the big round of bush, I just can't wait to get in there and, and do the business. Uh, because because I'm fighting James, I feel neither way about him. I don't like him, I don't dislike him, he's just a fight. He's just he's just someone who I'm going to get in the ring and <coughs> beat. Um, if I wasn't fighting him, I'd feel like everyone else feels about him. I wouldn't like him. How did you that one up, George? Because I think that answers that. That speaks for itself. It answers itself. There must, be, there must be some people who like him. He sold forty million pounds worth of tickets already. That's what I'm saying. Personally, 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 personally yeah. sold nine hundred, yeah. nine hundred tickets. How many? Sorry, Absolutely. How many? I won't pay well. You know that. <laughs> How many sold? 
How many, how many tickets have I gone out personally as sorry yeah. for your well, no, well, not, well, not none. None, okay. All right. Okay. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see tonight. George, we'll that's not a great attitude. No, 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 it's no, not no, for no. your promoter. It's for the promotion. You're yeah, of course, of course. It's got to be a success story. I don't need to go out of my way when I can put people straight on direct to, to the ticket hotline to buy tickets. We'll see. May 21st. Who gets the cheers, yeah? Okay, mate. And we'll see okay. how many of your 900 fans okay. are shouting. Okay. What's the chief motivation here for you, George? Is it? The British title, yeah, it's the British title. record, or is it the fact that it's James in the opposite corner? Everything, but James, um, I'm just treating him as another big fight. It's a high-profile fight. It's a title fight. It's a fight that I need to take seriously because he's an unbeaten fighter. Um, so I'm training like I'm fighting an unbeaten fighter. I'm not training because I'm fighting James Degas. Is there any issue for you, James? That obviously it's a good thing you haven't been in a crisis. Any of your fights yet? But is there any kind of issue? Well, no one's, one's pushed me. No one's pushed me. You expect been, to be pushed in this? Uh, no, to be honest, no. But I say we've got everything planned. We've got everything covered. So if it does happen, but <coughs> I cannot see it happening. I cannot see it. Happening. I'm going to still stand by my word and say we're doing four rounds. But I just hope he really does come to fight and put on a show for the fans. I really hope he does. Does it offer you any leeway, Adam, when you have a fighter who has? had things very much his own way in his career thus far. They take him out of that comfort zone and you wonder maybe, will he be able to cope? Will who be able to cope? Will James be able to cope? Of course he will. Of course he will. He won an Olympic gold medal. There's a lot of pressure winning an Olympic gold medal. Think about how many people watched him win the Olympic gold medal. He'll cope fine with the pressure. I don't know how he thinks he's going to beat me. You can't think he can stand off and outbox me. There's only a few people in the world that can do that. And if he comes to fight me, I say it's not too early. So they've, they've got to have a very, very, very good game plan. But we just have to see all your answers. You'll, you will get your answers on May 21st. You started a bit slow in your last fight. Um, have you worked on that with Adam? I mean, you don't want to be hanging around. No, I never want to hang around. Uh, if I start slow, I start slow. It's never intended to, but um, I don't plan to start slow on May 21st. Have you thought about that? I mean, if you look at that, at what? At the speed that he, he starts. Started quite slow in the last when one. the bell rings, you just have to be ready for whatever happens. That's it, and deal with whatever happens. Oops. That's right, thank you, Frank. Cheers. Hi, I'm Sophia De Stefano here with Frank Warren TV. We're here at the Dale Youth ABC, here at the press conference between James DeGale and George Groves. The fight's only two weeks away. For tickets, call 0844 856 0202.